YouTube, what's the deal? It's your girl Jahira, and I am back. What's going on, y'all? So, I've had a lot of thoughts around this issue, and I can't say with any great degree of certainty that I've worked out all of them for myself, but what I did know is that I wanted to talk about it, and I, I wanted to do so through a medium that would allow me to kind of state my piece uninterrupted and not feel the need to defend it because you know when when things like this occur in the pop culture zeitgeist like almost immediately factions begin to form and i don't know what side of the proverbial line i fall on quite yet I'm definitely leaning one way, don't get me wrong. But there's no, like, clearly delineated stance that I'm trying to take as of right now. I thought when I was planning on making this video that I would open it up with a story. A true story. And y'all know I'm not the one that does some contrived-ass story time for likes because I ain't getting paid for this. So, um, I'd get into this story and then I'd kind of talk about sort of where I personally stand on the Jesse Smollett scenario. Forgive me, it's, uh, it's about that time. Y'all know the staples are always going to be here. Another plus of not getting paid for this. So... I was in middle school, and there was a girl who I believe was two grades above me, which would have made her in ninth grade, because um, I believe I was in seventh at the time. And for the purposes of this video, I'm going to call her Tamara. So Tamara and I were not friends. I would call us friend Lee. She had a very close friend uh, whose, whose name should be um, Sade. Sure, why not? Sade. And, um, and they were in the same grade together. They put on a performance, a dance performance at the school's talent show to um, Everything's Gonna Be All Right, Naughty by Nature. Um, it was epic. I mean, these were the 90s, so, like, Naughty by Nature was, you know, fresh. Um, and, like, yeah, they, they were, they were the cool kids, and I was in awe of them. So, I say all this to say that, now, I should explain the kind of middle school that I went to. It was predominantly white, um... A lot of the kids from, like, more urban cities were bussed in. And that's what was going on. It was a private school, um, which should be noted. So one day, we were all called unexpectedly into a school assembly and informed that the N-word had been scrawled across Tamara's locker and on the cover of, I guess, one of her school books. And Tamara was black. And for many people in that area, it, again, being a predominantly white school, it was really the first encounter that they'd had or been able to bear witness to of overt racism. Um, kids at the assembly were encouraged to come up to the front of the auditorium, to the microphone, and um, state their feelings. It was an emotionally overwrought experience, particularly considering that we're talking about, you know, this school went from 6th grade to 12th. So, I mean, teenagers. 
you know, in, in, in various states of adolescence, um, were pouring their hearts out in this auditorium. I mean, it was real. Like, it was really real. And we all went home. And, um, days went past. I can't tell you how many. I really feel like it was less than a week. And eventually, we were informed that Tamara had been the one to scrawl the slur across her locker and across her book herself. And Tamara was immediately, I presume, expelled. We never saw her again at the school. Um, and my... 13-year-old brain could not conceive of why someone would do that. I didn't understand or comprehend sort of the notions of um, cries for help or self-loathing or mental health issues. Wh whatever contributes to um, committing an act like that. I don't want to say committing because that's really criminalizing, but like performing an act like that, we'll say. And now I guess to the Jesse issue. <laughs> Earlier today, I wrote on Facebook, those of you who follow me on Facebook saw it, um, facebook.com backslash Jahira's a problem. Earlier today, people saw me wrote that I stand with Jesse Smollett. And there's been a bit of a mixed bag. There was one comment that I really just, I saw and grew such disdain for immediately, which was really knee-jerk of me that I just deleted it. But most of the people who are my friends and, and family and follow me, you know, are, are in the same boat and, and echo similar sentiments. And what I wasn't willing to do on Facebook, I will do here, which was to explain why I stand with Jesse Smollett. And there are a number of reasons. And again, I haven't, you know me, y'all. I don't, I don't write down bullet points before cutting on the camera. That's just not my speed. It never has been. I speak. I speak and, and, and hope it goes well. That's really my M.O. Um, I stand with Jesse Smollett because cancel culture is at an all-time high, and yet I recognize that no one is ever really canceled. Like, I, I don't think there's a single example of a cancellation that occurred that stuck. Because... This country loves uh, redemption. You know what I mean? Like, they, they love the grand apology. They love the overt gestures. They love, you know what I mean, that, that sort of comeback moment. Too much to ever let a real cancellation, like, stick. It doesn't happen. It does not happen. It may take some time. Don't get me wrong, because, I mean, I, I, Chrisette Michelle is a great example of somebody, like, who has yet to bounce back. <laughs> For good reason. But it just doesn't, it doesn't stick. And the second reason why, so, I mean, that's, that's why, because I, you know, everybody, like, with, with the pitchforks and the machetes and, like, the flaming whatever, you know what I mean, ready to nail his ass to the wall, like, <sighs> which kind of segues into the second reason why I stand with Jesse Smollett. Black men in this country are thrown away far too easily. They're thrown away 
and tossed to the side and the presumption of guilt before it's played out in the legal system, it just, it's, it's gotten way too easy to toss out the baby with the bathwater. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, I understand, you know, what the Chicago Police Department has said and alleged and, and asserted. I, I've, I've seen it all. I've read, I'm not in the dark about any of this, but I've also seen what police departments have said about M Michael Brown, you know what I'm saying, and Eric Garner, and Tamir Rice, and, and Ronaldo Castile, and like, I am sorry, I've been through too much standing at the intersectionality of being an you know person under the under the rainbow and a person of color and an immigrant to buy everything that I'm sold it's just not that easy anymore to get me and and the 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 whatever you call it like the Kool-Aid drinking mentality is so pervasive in this culture and it's so real that you even have other people of color, like, willing to, you know what I'm saying, standing up and being like, yeah, it was just a hookup gone wrong or a cry for attention. He did it for the money. Da -da 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 -da. You know what I mean? And I'm going to leave open the possibility that that is what happened. Far be it for me to say anything otherwise, I was not there. A fun fact that I wish more people would get a hold of. We weren't there. We were not there. But when you have people who are ostensibly guilty of other crimes, who have yet to be indicted on charges, who have yet to spend a day in handcuffs or a day in prison or whatever the case may be, who are not on the LGBT spectrum, who are not of color, and something like this feels like it got so sewed up and in the bag, it's all just a little too neat for me. And in this current political climate where white, cisgender, heterosexual, affluent, men are really realizing that their foothold on the necks of the American people is starting to slip, that, that their absolute power is becoming less than absolute. Um, great lengths will be gone to in order to maintain their positioning. And when, ya, when, when, when MAGA got thrown into this mix, it created a pressure, I believe, that would not have existed had this been a white, cisgender, heterosexual, affluent man. We've seen this time and time and time again. So... It's not I stand with just Jesse because I, I've turned, uh, you know, a, a blind eye and stuck my head in the sand and I'm not looking at the news and I just believe what I want to believe. I stand with Jesse because there's a process in theory that has to play out before we can conclusively state this happened, this did not happen, here's the reason why. I stand with Jesse because I am a person who has been in handcuffs and sent off to holding for some things that I did not do. And it's what I would want done for me. I don't want to be convicted before I'm tried. I don't want my loved ones to be convicted before they're tried. Listen. If every arrest that occurred in this country ended up with a, 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 a guilty sentence before we even have a chance to go through the legal process, how many of your loved ones would be locked away right now? How many of mine? How? What about me? 
it, it's just erroneous to me to, to cast aspersions on someone's character based upon what we know to be a corrupt system. What we have seen time and time again to be a, a, a less than judicious process that unfairly and frequently disadvantages marginalized groups. And I have watched as black and brown people have posted, I knew it, I knew it all along. He's got to go. He's get, And it's just like, but would you feel that way if he was your cousin? Would you feel that way if he was your brother or your son? Would you feel that way if, if there was some kind of personal relationship at stake here? You know, this is the same actor who plays a role in which he declared his sexuality in an out and public and widespread method. And people stood up and cheered for him. And the road from hero to demon in this culture is a very short one. And I struggle with that. So I stand with Jesse Smollett and I will continue to stand with Jesse Smollett for as long as this process really takes. Because that's what I would want someone to do for me. And that's just my take on it. I am very open to hearing yours. Feel free to drop it down in the comments below. That's all I got. That's where I am right now. So wherever this finds you, I hope it meets you well. And wherever you, wherever you go, please take my love with you. I love you so dearly. It, it's an awesome thing to be able to be back and um and converse with y'all so until next time y'all as always one love